Well, good afternoon. I'm Matt McLean and joined alongside Patrick DeHaan here on Gas Buddy's main channel. If you've ever listened to our Over the Barrel podcast, uh, you may recognize the voice uh, on my side, but uh, this is now the face to go with it. So a very good afternoon to you. And Patrick and I are here for the most part. Uh, Patrick, uh, who is going to be discussing a lot of different gas prices and some trends that are expected this summer. Uh, of course, Memorial Day weekend is just a little over a week away. And that is usually the start of a lot of different ups and downs when it comes to gas prices across the country and beyond. So, Patrick, a very good afternoon to you. And uh, how's it going? Uh, good, Matt. Uh, we've had a couple uh, technical issues here getting started. So thanks to our fans for bearing with us here as we uh, first time we do a an actual live video, but uh, excited to be here. Summer's just around the corner. Spring is in the air. All I see from your photo is it looks like a lot of allergies, but uh, <laughs> uh, props to you for being able to survive with all that pollen around you. It's five years of allergy shots and uh, suddenly I can magically be outside. I, I'm, I'm kind of thankful for that. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, there are a lot of allergies, no questions, but uh, I'm thankful for for the shots that I got. Well, absolutely. You know, uh, and it's, it's it's exciting to be here again. Uh, it seems like from here we're going to skip right through the summer. It always goes so fast, uh, but a little bit of good news today, right? Yeah, it looks as if there are actually quite a bit of uh, things going on across the country and a bit of a lowering of the gas prices from what I'm seeing and some of the stuff that you've been talking about. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about some of that and, and what's going on uh, with gas prices across the country. Well, Matt, as you mentioned, uh, we're getting a little bit of relief. Depending on where you are, there are a few states that are seeing prices go up. Uh, we could actually see gas prices inching up in more states. The price of oil has drifted a little bit higher, Matt. We can get into that a little bit more. It has to do with the debt ceiling discussions going on right now. There's a little bit of optimism on Wall Street that there will be a deal, and that certainly could push prices up. Americans could uh, could be feeling a little bit better if there is a debt deal. It's better news for the economy, um, and that's why oil prices are up a little bit. But you know, as we look into state-by-state -state price movements here over the last uh, week or so, there are some states seeing big increases. There are states seeing a little bit of a decrease. So it's kind of a mixed bag. But Matt, the good news here is that the average price of gasoline today is $1.08 below where it was a year ago. If you're filling up with diesel, it's even better. In fact, diesel prices haven't been this low compared to the year prior since 2009. That's when GM was still building Pontiac, Sobs, and Saturn. So we have to go back a long time to see some of these metrics. All in all, gas price is still a little bit above normal, Matt, going back the last uh, 10 years on Memorial Day weekend. We're still above average, but at least we're not paying $4.59 a gallon, which is what we were spending a year ago. Well, I know whenever I was out a little bit earlier today across a couple of different states, I, I live in an area of the Midwest and Upper South where I can easily get from one state to another within just a handful of minutes. Uh, prices, I'm still seeing some prices, uh, and for some of you on the coastal areas, I'm going to gloat a little bit, but you know, 289, 291. I know you folks in California are not seeing that. I know you folks down in, per se, Tampa, Washington, D.C., New York prices are definitely not that cheap. But I'm also seeing a bit of an inching up a touch uh, as well. Uh, I saw 319 a gallon, which is the first time I've seen that in a while. So Patrick, kind of what are we looking at um, as we're moving into the Memorial Day weekend, especially? And then I know we can get into the summer uh, types of a forecast that you're looking on as well. But in a more immediate sense, what are you kind of thinking for prices? Because like I said, I'm starting to see some of the stations inching up. And it would be, uh, you know, pretty normal that all of a sudden the lawnmower would start off behind me after I get all set up here. So I'll mute my microphone uh, for those of you so you can hear Patrick a little bit better. Well, it's a sign of spring, Matt, to hear those lawnmowers going. And uh, you know what? Average prices are just a little bit lower than last week. But like I said, some states have seen pretty big increases. The national average about a penny and a half below where it was a week ago. The national average about 351. It's kind of played a little bit of a bounce around here in the last few days. Uh, but like I said, that's still about 16 cents below where we were a month ago, Matt. The good news is that typically gas prices peak before the bulk of the summer driving season hits. The reason for that, while well, something I, I probably sound like a broken record, but everyone knows about the switch over to summer gasoline. That's basically behind us now. Refinery maintenance is wrapping up. 
And that's typically why gas prices peak before the summer driving season, because that maximum pressure, kind of thinking as a NASA, NASA space shuttle launch, right? The maximum pressure is kind of early on, right after launch. And so gas prices are starting to ease because the transition to summer gasoline is over. Refineries are finishing up maintenance. Like I said, there are some exceptions to this. Uh, where prices have moved up. The Great Lakes have seen prices jump up. Michigan saw prices jumping up. But there's still a lot of places that are inching down. Uh, all in all, going to give a shout out to those in the South. Mississippi, the only state in the nation, Matt, that's under $3. The statewide average, they're $295. Texas at $305. Louisiana at $306. So if you're in the South, you're probably enjoying a lot more prices under $3 than the rest of us. Compare that to Hawaii, Matt where average prices are 477 a gallon California at 474 Arizona is at 464 I've had a lot of folks on social media say what in the world's going on with Arizona for those that don't listen to our over a barrel podcast I'd recommend you tune in Arizona Matt getting hit with a, a special blend of gasoline with a population explosion and refinery maintenance that's still lingering so for all those in Arizona wondering what's going on, tune into the Over a Barrel podcast. We really go into a lot of it. But all in all, Matt, good news this summer. Gas prices likely to stay quite a bit below last year. For those that remember 2022, the national average peaked at 503 a gallon. That was in mid-June. We could be over $1.50 lower at some point this summer. But there are some caveats, Matt. Hurricane season is just a couple of weeks away. And if we get hit with a major hurricane in the south, that could push prices up. All in all, the economy as well is a bellwether. We could see prices perking up if the economy improves over the course of the summer. Yeah, that is the big question. Is the economy going to improve? Uh, I know that there are a lot of analysts, economical analysts out there that are indicating, you know, we're moving toward a recession, some sounding a bit more optimistic, some sounding a bit more pessimistic. That's not totally uncommon uh, when you have a, a, you know, a lot of economists in the same room. Not everyone's going to have the same opinion, and it's certainly understandable. But let's say the economy does, uh, you know, improve over the summer. Uh, what do you see that happening with gas prices? And then the next question would be, what if uh, some of those economists that are indicating perhaps a downturn in the economy, where could prices go from there? Well, Matt, you know, a, a lot of where we're going to go this summer is contingent uh, on the economy. Uh, you bring up strong points. You know, uh, we've seen the economy slowing down a bit. That's why gas prices are quite a bit lower this year. At least one of the ingredients for why prices are lower is because consumption is down Generally, when the economy is strong, Americans get out more and more, they spend more, and a lot of that also leads to rising gasoline consumption. So with the economy slowing down, there's been less consumption, and that's put downward pressure on prices. But Matt, if the Federal Reserve starts to cut interest rates later this year, if that happens in the summer, that may inspire some more gasoline demand. So that's why the Fed is probably going to be very careful before they start lowering interest rates, because that will likely start to mean an increase in overall consumption. So watch out for that. The other wild cards, like I mentioned, hurricane season, inventories of gasoline, Matt, are still somewhat tight for this time of year. We're actually remarkably similar to last year. The big story, though, has been a drop in demand. A lot of that because of the overall economic anxiety of a lot of Americans are feeling. In fact, Matt, we put out our summer travel survey today. Uh, unsurprisingly, more Americans said to us that they're going to be hitting the road this year. 64% of Americans planning to take at least one road trip. That's up from 58% last year. But interestingly, Matt, of the group, of that 64% that wants to hit the road or is planning to, almost two-thirds of them have yet to confirm their travel plans. So uh, a little bit of that economic anxiety playing in. You know, we've seen layoffs, but jobs markets still look pretty strong. So I think there's some Americans just kind of on pins and needles, unsure, especially after last year's record-setting prices, maybe a little bit of uncertainty whether Americans are going to follow through and hit the road this summer. And that's a, that's a lot of dynamic uh, information, Patrick, because obviously the higher demand for gasoline uh, could create some price 
increases, one would assume, uh, I, I would think, supply and demand. That's kind of how that works. And so there's a lot of, I guess, asterisks to some of this stuff. And that's really tough for you, especially because you have this uh, responsibility to try and predict uh, where prices are going. And sometimes that can be a little bit more difficult. So what are you seeing? Um, you know, you've mentioned a little bit there with all the different prices. You've mentioned um, the, the, the idea that there may be some 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 moments there that could create some issues with prices as far as an increase. What is your overall, uh, for lack of a better term, gut telling you at this particular point? What are you looking at and thinking for the next several months? Well, Matt, I think over the course of the summer, we're not going to be too far off where we stand right now. That may be bad news if you're hoping for lower prices. That may be good news if you're not wanting to see much higher prices. So, you know, we're at 351 for national average today, Matt. I'm going to guess that over the course of the summer, we'll probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of as low as 335. We could also go up to 385 if some of those conditions that are unexpected happen. If we see a refinery go down, if we do see a major hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico, the good news, Matt, is that the odds of hitting the $4 a gallon mark, something that looked possible a couple of months ago, are starting to fade. I really don't think that we could get to $4 a gallon as easily. Maybe if there's something like a Hurricane Harvey, a perfect storm that shuts down refineries in the Gulf Coast, or maybe if the economy suddenly starts to get into high gear again, we could see prices drift higher. But Matt, I think one thing is nearly certain we shouldn't get anywhere near those record setting prices we saw last year of $5. You know, and by the way, I say the national average is at $351. Keep in mind the range in prices under $3 a gallon in Mississippi, still nearly $5 in some areas of California and Arizona. Um, and so, you know, there is quite the variety in prices. And again, if you're hitting the road this summer, Matt, the best advice, you know, there's a lot of different rules. People say, you know, go fill up, buy a truck stop, fill up this day of the week or, you know, whatnot. The best advice for Americans hitting the road this summer is still check those prices because you just never know if you're going to drive down the street and see it 25 cents a gallon cheaper. The other thing, Matt, especially for you, somebody that's in an area with a lot of state boundaries, watch out for those state lines. I know they have really nice signs. If you're going into Florida, right, everyone wants a photo with the welcome to Florida sign, but those sh those signs should be a word of caution because you'd cross the state boundary and gas prices could shoot up 20 or 30 cents or they could fall 20 to 30 cents. So make sure if you're hitting the road this summer, pack your gas buddy app before you cross the state line, make sure you check those prices you don't want to leave those low gas prices behind. Yeah, given my geographic location, I can be in about five different states within about 30 minutes of where I'm at. And you're absolutely right. I can attest to that. Some states could be as much as 80 to 90 cents a gallon difference. And the way that you have mentioned, I know in some of our podcasts, is that uh, you know state taxes on gas uh, have a lot to do with that, I would think. Yeah, Matt, they really do. In fact, that's probably the biggest difference between some of these areas is gasoline taxes. The other thing, Matt, I don't want to get too much into it, but there are different regions of the country, depending on their local, their regional supply and demand balances. Um, there can be different prices based on that kind of foundation. The region is carved up into, or the, excuse me, the nation is carved up into five different regions and you can see different prices in different regions. As I quickly look at some of the numbers here, Matt, a good example of that right now is that there is about a 26 cent a gallon difference between gasoline, the wholesale price of gasoline in the Gulf Coast and the cost of gasoline in say the Northeast. So that's a pretty big difference. Then on top of that, you have state gasoline taxes that can vary. So that's why it's so critical when you cross those state lines to check on prices, because theoretically, if you're on a longer road trip, Matt, you're probably going to be crossing one of those regional boundaries, and you could not only get a double dose of, of price differential from not only the state boundary, but crossing into a different region. And if anyone wants to really get into the weeds a bit, they can look up those five different regions on the Energy Information Administration website, Matt. We call those pad districts p-a-d-d -D. if you're heading out of them you're probably going to notice a big price fluctuation especially if there are issues in one region but not another one of the other things patrick that kind of helps us conserve gas uh that you have mentioned in the past uh, that we have talked about and that is 
basically what we can control ourselves, which is the way that we drive. Talk to us a little bit about how much of an impact that can actually have. A lot of folks may not understand or realize that, you know, just letting up on the pedal just a little bit could actually create quite a bit of savings when it comes to uh, fuel efficiency. Yeah, it really can, Matt. You know, in the summer, you know, there's only so much time in the day. And I know a lot of Americans are stressed. They want to get to their destination. I can't think of a better example than me because getting from point A to point B is not fun. I want to leave point A and immediately be at point B. Sometimes, you know, going 75 or going slightly over the speed limit like many Americans do is actually going to really start to stifle your fuel economy, especially when you get over 75 miles an hour. You're spending more of that gasoline trying to fight off the wind that's hitting your car. So doing something like going a few miles an hour under the speed limit generally can increase your fuel efficiency by 10 to 25%, especially if you have a high profile vehicle, Matt, those savings really can add up. I've gone from say 26 miles a gallon when I was going 77 and I go all the way up to 35 miles a gallon if I'm doing about 65 or 64. So if you have a couple extra minutes or, you know, if you just want to make your fuel go further, slowing down just a little bit and especially using cruise control, Matt, because humans are imperfect drivers, using cruise control and going slightly under the speed limit can really boost how many miles you're getting out of every tank of gas. I would think, yeah, that would absolutely uh, be quite beneficial. Maybe even the tires uh, and, and other aspects, making sure that your tires are are really in good shape and, and properly inflated and, and all the other fluids in the vehicle can, I would assume, all have a, 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 a unifying impact, I would think, on the fuel efficiency. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. You mentioned the, the, the other great examples too. Now, most of the efficiency is from what your foot is on the pedal and how hard it's on the pedal. But as you mentioned, if your tires are underinflated, if they're soft, there's going to be more friction between your tires and the surface of the road. And that means your car is going to have to work harder to offset that lower pressure. That's why a lot of folks that like to hypermile or get more miles per gallon, Matt, they tend to put a little bit more air pressure on their tires because it reduces the friction and it makes your car do less work. Uh, the other thing, of course, if you have any check engine lights, Matt, now there are some cars that if your check engine light, especially if it's flashing, it's basically trying to tell you that the car is not running right. And if you have a flashing check engine light, Matt, you can generally get 20 to 25% less fuel efficiency, not to get too much into the weeds, but when your check engine light is flashing, it means your car is running in limp mode. The engine computer that controls your car is basically throwing a lot of fuel in the engine because it doesn't know. There's loss of a critical sensor like, some, like an oxygen sensor. But even if your check engine light is on, you'll want to get it checked out because oftentimes those check engine lights can mean that your car is, is losing efficiency somewhere. Maybe a sensor has gone bad. It needs some attention. So especially if you're on a long road trip, Matt, get your car maintained, check your tire pressure. And I think the other thing Americans are guilty of Make sure you're not hauling around excess weight, you know, whether it's dog food, I have to get my dog food. And sometimes those bags are heavy. I leave it in there. Every hundred pounds of weight, Matt, can reduce your fuel efficiency by two to 4%, depending on what kind of car you have. Well, it's certainly an incentive to go on a diet and lose some weight. That's for sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Left of me uh, to haul around, right? <laughs> right. Let me throw you off for just a minute. Let's do a fact or fiction very quickly and see what the answer is, because I'm certain you know the answer to this. It, you get less gas mileage and fuel efficiency when you drive in the rain than when the highways are dry. Is that truth or false? That is true. There's a little bit more friction because your car is having to navigate, especially if you get a lot of rainfall, Matt. Um, the other thing you'll want to be aware of is uh, um, um, when just when it starts to get wet as well, your surface, your, your grip on the road is not as good as a lot of those oils come to the surface. So not only do you use a, uh, lose a little bit of fuel efficiency, but you'll want to be careful after it just starts raining because a lot of the oils that cars leave behind tend to float to the surface, creating kind of a slick surface. See, that's what's fun about Patrick. I did not prep him with any of these questions. I just like salt <laughs> and pepper them through through the uh, broadcast. And all of a sudden he's like, yeah, it's this, it's this. He, he knows everything. So this is this is why I do it this way. And it's, it's very entertaining for me anyway. But uh, with regard to everything else, uh, Patrick, the, the price point that we are looking at uh, for the summer, you're thinking, uh, as you have mentioned, not nearly as bad, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, as, as the price points that we saw last summer. And this would be in spite of, take, for example, Iran seizing a couple of crude oil tankers. Um, there's also, you know, some 
potential word that maybe Ukraine and Russia might be working on a, a peaceful solution after more than a year of fighting mm -hmm. um, and, and other geographic situations uh, across the globe that could create some spikes and even decreases into the oil price. Can you touch on that just a little bit and, and some of the things that you're seeing across the, the globe that could create um, some unknowns in the price point? Sure, Matt. Generally, good news for the economy is bad news for gas prices. Um, I'd love to see some sort of uh, 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 you know ceasefire between Russia and Ukraine. That would also likely mean uh, oil prices could drift lower because Russia's supply of oil could start going to other countries. Now, you know, if that were to happen, that would be great news. Uh, but that also could mean more consumption. People are going to feel better if, if Russia ends its war in Ukraine. And so if people are feeling better, they generally consume more gasoline as well. So keep that in mind. Now, if Iran goes to seize tankers, that obviously can have an impact depending on how much oil is seized, uh, depending on the scale of things. But keep in mind, uh, Iran is heavily sanctioned right now. So not much is, is expected. If, if they go seize 20 oil tankers, that could be problematic. But so far, we've only seen here and there uh, Iran sees one oil tanker. And some of the time, Matt, there's actually some evidence that Iran has not actually seized tankers that have been full with crude oil. So that's another wild card as well. But overall, if the economy starts to heat up, if it's good news, if the stock market's up, it's generally going to pull oil prices up as well with it. Keep in mind, like I said, inventories, Matt, of oil and gasoline are still rather tight. So if we see a couple of refinery outages that are unexpected or some unexpected improvements in the economy, that could pull prices up a little bit this summer. But all in all, Matt, like I said, I think the odds of the national average hitting $4 a gallon are pretty low. I will also say that in Arizona, where prices are in many instances higher than California, Arizona has been dealing with some refinery maintenance and some other issues like population uh, expansion. Arizona is likely to see prices fall 50 to 75 cents a gallon by the end of the summer. So some good news there. I wish I could say the same thing for California, where prices are also very high. But, um, you know, other worth mentioning, Washington State just started a carbon tax. So prices there this summer are probably going to be a little bit closer to last summer. Certainly not as high. But a new carbon tax is going to keep prices a little bit higher in Washington than, say, if you look at the national average this year to last year. So a lot of these kind of uh, carve outs, if you will, there's a lot of special conditions going on. But for many Americans, you're not going to spend nearly as much filling your car up this summer. Uh, and for those where prices are high, like I said, Arizona is going to see a lot of relief. So all in all, Matt, not a bad summer, but I think people are still very anxious, you know, 40 percent of those that we surveyed said that inflation and high prices have caused them to rethink their travel plans. So that leads me to believe that even if there is some of this good news, we're still going to be seeing gas prices kept in check because of a lot of Americans have been hit with a really high inflation and that's probably stifling some level of demand. I know that you've mentioned Arizona uh, on our podcast for Over a Barrel. We've uh, talked uh, several times regarding our friends in South Florida as well. Uh, about a month or so ago, the uh, Port of Everglades had some flood damage that created a bit of a hiccup uh, in how uh, gas stations in South Florida were receiving uh, gasoline. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of give us an update on that? Are we basically about back to normal? Yeah, we really are, Matt. Arizona had some uh, very low level uh, outages as well. Those have basically completely resolved. And Florida basically is, is pretty much resolved at this point. All the pumps at Port Everglades are back. And, and according to our latest data, uh, the outages were now under 10%. So we're talking just a, you know, just a minor inconvenience for some people. But yeah, Florida's back. Uh, no real issues out there, Matt, supply-wise. It should be a real nice and quiet Memorial Day weekend with prices that are far below last year. And, you know, just in time for Memorial Day, Matt, I know it's a, a little over a week away, but if anyone's listening and that haven't signed up for a way to save the Pay With Gas Buddy card, links to your checking account. Some stations offer what we call deal alerts. You can save up to 25 cents a gallon through the Gas Buddy app with your Pay With Gas Buddy card. I would encourage anyone that's getting hit with high inflation, that's really feeling the high prices, Go check out pay.gasbuddy.com and sign up for the Pay With Gas Buddy card. You'll be saving on gasoline all summer long. Nobody should be paying what that gas station sign says. And that's the great thing about pairing that Pay With Gas Buddy card with the app. There's a lot of savings. If I go through my app right now, I'm going to bet you that probably at least a third to a half of the stations listed 
all have lower prices if you pay with your pay with gas buddy card. So make it a smooth summer, save with gas buddy, check out those loyalty programs at gas stations too, Matt, you know, Shell Fuel Rewards and uh, Pilot Flying J also have fuel rewards programs that now integrate directly into the gas buddy app. It's really cool. Each time I go to shell or pilot, I get another five cents off for adding those loyalty rewards. So just another way that motorists can save all summer long. Absolutely. And I know a lot of uh, folks are very thankful for the fact that they are able to save some money on that as well. Anything else that you can think of that you think are uh, the viewers of Gas Buddy would really want to know right now uh, with regard to what we can see even next weekend for Memorial Day throughout the summer? Mm -hmm. um, anything along those lines that you think is important that we should recap? Well, Matt, um, I, it, like I said, usually gas prices are at the highest right at the start of summer because of the pressure behind the change to summer gasoline and refinery maintenance. If it's a normal summer, if there are no hurricanes, gas prices usually decline most of the summer. Now, like I said, there could be some hot spots here and there, especially if there are unexpected refinery disruptions. But trying to clear up that myth, a lot of Americans expect the highest prices in the midst of summer. The reason why that doesn't really happen, Matt, is because supply of the summer blend increases over the summer. And that's why the highest prices are not in the middle of the summer. Even though demand hits a peak in mid to late July, prices usually peak in late to early May. And uh, excuse me, late April to early May. So we're there. The other thing, Matt, real quick to touch on here as we finish, the price of diesel also has come down substantially. The national average for diesel now under $4 a gallon. Uh, so the good news, anyone hauling an RV or you have a fifth wheel, uh, you know, diesel prices have moderated significantly, Matt. That's the great news. The most common diesel prices across the country are now under the $4 a gallon mark. And like I said, there are some caveats to what we've been talking about. California, the West Coast, likely to see above average prices because they generally always do. But even California, Matt, by the end of summer, if things go well, you know, we're going to start to see more of the sub $3 prices popping up. Remember, a lot of states fell under $3 a gallon over the course of the winter, and then that winter storm really messed things up this December. Looking beyond summer, Matt, it's going to be a good summer, but it's not impossible that we could see more places back under the $3 a gallon mark this fall and this winter. So great news. Have a great summer. Um, Matt, I'll throw it back to you. Yeah, we do have one very quick viewer question if you've got time. Uh, uh, Lucia sure. actually is asking, do you work with gas stations with people with a disability? So do you do does that help uh, with the, within the gas buddy app? A person is asking if that would show. Well, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what they may be referring to, but a lot of the time there are phone numbers listed for stations if you need accessibility help from a gas station. Oftentimes that's why Gas Buddy has been tracking the phone numbers of those stations so that you can get help directly. But uh, again, have a safe and pleasant summer, everyone. Uh, Matt, uh, hey, it's been great chatting with you again. Absolutely. And of course, you can get a hold of uh, Patrick in really anytime on Twitter. Uh, and and uh, what is your Twitter handle again? Gas Buddy Guy? I'm at Gas Buddy Guy. Absolutely. They can also email us at podcast at gasbuddy.com. And remember, Matt, uh, for those that follow us on Facebook, we appreciate that. But check out our podcast, the web address overabarrel.gasbuddy.com. Or, Matt, you can simply go to wherever you listen to podcasts and search for the Over a Barrel podcast from Gas Buddy. Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. We hope you have a very pleasant afternoon wherever you are. And hopefully the weather is uh, nice where you can get out like I'm trying to do right now and, and enjoy it. A lot more sounds and all. So we will uh, actually chat with you again very soon right here on Gas Buddy and over on our podcast at Over a Barrel. Thanks so much.